Another savage rainstorm sweeps across the Southland, and high seas force officials to scuttle the beautiful Lady Alexandra. Russ Nichols investigates a supermarket's policy toward item pricing. And Dr. William Rader has more on a lifelong program to help people who overeat. Lincoln Mercury announces cash back from the check. The kind of savings you want on the kind of cars you need. Buy a high mileage Mercury Zephyr and you get $300 direct to you. $400 on a sporty Capri. $500 on an exciting new Cougar XR7. But act now. It's a limited time offer. Come share our pride in these high mileage Mercuries and get cash back for the cat. Federal Express will come and pick up the stuff on your desk and deliver it clear across the country to somebody else's desk overnight for as little as $17. We find Giamara eminently drinkable. Giamara, a wine has to earn its reputation, but it doesn't have to be costly. Hot heat, dry heat, heat that hurts your hair. You've got hair fever. You need flex conditioner. Revlon's unique balsam and protein formula fights dry heat wilted hair with one, two, three, four, five working conditioners. Leaves hair gloriously healthy looking, flexible, full of body to hold up under heat. Got hair fever? You need flex balsam and protein conditioner from Revlon. Beautiful. The apes have a leader tomorrow. This is Channel 7, the number one station for news and information in Southern California. Eyewitness News continues now with Jerry Dumpy, Christine Mund, Paul Moyer, Tony Hernandez, Dr. George, and the Eyewitness News team. From the desert to the sea to all of Southern California, a good evening. Here's the latest at 6. The new storm the Southland has been bracing for has arrived. The rain started again just in time to make problems for homeward-bound commuters. Damage from the week of storm so far has climbed to well over $250 million, the loss of more than 20 lives. There's still more to come to further try emergency crews and volunteers trying to cope with the havoc. For the situation right now in Altadena, we go live to Leo McElroy for that report. Leo. Used to have... This doctor's house used to have a Cadillac standing in the driveway. Right now it's a bulldozer here. What they're doing is digging out the mud from that last flood, the one that came through at 6 o'clock yesterday morning. They're digging it out for two reasons. One, because it's a terrible mess. Neighbors, patients, friends, all digging in here, trying to get the mud out of the garage. They've already scraped most of it out of the house. But they're also getting ready for a second reason, and that is that another flood may come. This house has been thoroughly sandbagged, but they're aware that no sandbag will stop at all. That, in fact, they must be ready for whatever gets through that sandbag barricade that's been set up on the street outside. That's the situation here in Altadena, along Altadena Drive, where the homes have been warned that they are in real danger. Down here is just a matter of watching and waiting. Meanwhile, at the Rubio Flood Control Basin, up in the hills above here, it's an entirely different situation. The Rubio Flood Control Basin is still nearly full of debris. And that debris is piled up dangerously against the steel pilings which have held it back till now. If the water level rises, that debris will sweep through, come down the flood channel, block it up as the flood channel turns, and cause the flood to spread out through this residential area. It's a rough situation. A number of units have gotten in there from the flood control district to work on it during the day. They were afraid the storm might arrive and stop them from doing that work. But what little they've been able to clear out came almost too little and too late. At this point, the rain has started once again, and it all depends on Mother Nature what's going to happen now. For the people of Altadena, especially the endangered area from Altadena Drive to Washington and from Allen to Maiden Lane, the people who've been warned that trouble is on the way, the warning came almost too late. The occupant of this house received a notice this morning that the Flood Control District was in real trouble with that catch basin and that efforts would be made to clear it out. He's viewing that warning a little cynically. He would have rather have had it two days ago. That's our situation here in Altadena. In Riverside County, more people in trouble. John North is there. 
Leo, I'm at the evacuation center in Hammond, where just about 35 minutes ago, a representative of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department came in and told these people that they could go home if they want to. But if they go home, keep their cars packed and be ready to move at a moment's notice. Earlier today, a levee was breached along the San Jacinto River. The water started coming over. That levee has been breached at several points along the river. It's flooding thousands of acres of farmland. At one point, three Caterpillar tractors were trapped in the water. Their uh, operators managed to get out safely, but you can see from the tape that I hope you're watching now that a lot of farmland has been lost. As a matter of fact, about 800 head of cattle have been lost. At one point or another during the afternoon, about 500 people have passed through this Red Cross evacuation center. Most of them have found refuge with families and friends, and a lot of them, as of about 30 minutes ago, decided to take a chance and go back home to their trailers and spend the night. Captain Bill Park of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department says that after a conference with the Army Corps of Engineers, things seem to have stabilized a little bit. They've managed to fill rocks into the breach in the levee. They've managed to get it stabilized, but that doesn't mean that the danger is over. It could very easily break again. There's a lot of water coming down in the mountain, so he's warning people that they go back at their own risk. Some of these people have decided that they're going to stay here tonight rather than go back again. This lady is one of them who's having a great time back here. Why Why are you not going back to your home with your trailer park? You really want to know, looking like this, I wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> We've had five different families offer our house for us. But we're just going to stick it out and help out with everybody else. Rather than going to be evacuated again. Yeah, at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> She's, most of the people are taking it with good humor. There is obviously still a really a very real danger. Uh, much depends on the amount of rain they get. And as I say, it is a calculated risk based on the Army Corps of Engineers calculation that the levee has been stabilized, but it could break. And the Sheriff's Department has been stationed at the trailer park and at a uh, subdivision nearby where up to 500 people were evacuated today so that they could be evacuated again at a moment's notice. Back to you. Okay, we got tr uh, trouble and big trouble too with the ocean as well. High waves right now are pounding the coast so hard that on certain beaches, lifeguard stations had to be relocated farther from the tide. Otherwise, it just would have eaten up the ground underneath those stations. At Redondo Beach, uh, Kings Harbor, the Lady Alexandria, a floating restaurant and disco, finally gave up the fight last night. The high surf broke right through the protective dam that was surrounding her. Her beams split. She began taking on water and the painful decision to scuttle the boat was made. It was hoped that action would leave her uh, hull flat on the bottom and uh, a little bit more secure that way, but the force of the storm made that absolutely impossible. It didn't work. Right now, the 150-foot ship is listing about 30 degrees, snug against the side of uh, the dam because of damage inflicted earlier by the storm. She had been closed to the public for a week. No one was injured last night, though, when she finally went down for the last time. The flow of raw sewage is another separate problem here caused by the rain. And the flow of the sewage through Malibu Canyon has created a real health hazard in an area that's already had much more than its share of storm problems. Barney Morris has this for us here. Malibu Creek flowing into the Pacific Ocean, a spectacularly beautiful sight. Unfortunately, Malibu Creek is being polluted with 5 million gallons of raw sewage every day. The sewage is going into the creek because the electric pumps at the Los Virgenes Sewer Treatment Plant near Tapia Park were completely inundated with water on Saturday. The plant has been a center of controversy anyway because of the previous pollution of Malibu Creek. The plant manager, James Kobaugh, says nothing could be done about this latest breakdown. When all the power was gone and the pumps were submerged, uh, we were out of business. In other words, you just got totally flooded when that creek ran over and flooded out all your electrical power. That's right. That's right. And we don't dare start anything now until it all, all the electricians and Edison dry out everything and make it safe. Because of the raw sewage going into the creek and ultimately the ocean, the beaches from Marina del Rey to Point Doom have been closed. This pollution problem in Malibu Creek is not going to be solved very quickly. Because even after the water treatment plant has been put back into operation, those broken sewer lines upstream are going to have to be repaired. It might take a week or so. And until they are, that raw sewage will continue to dump into this creek. This is Barney Morris reporting for Channel 7 Eyewitness News, Malibu.